Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Well, it's around that time right here on KAZ Radio. Perhaps one of my most favorite ministries, none other than Brenda Abrams and Friends. Take it away, Reverend. Amen, amen, amen. Good evening to each and every one of you out there. God bless each and every one. So happy to be sitting in the chair. So happy to be back with you this afternoon. And we're just giving God all of the praises because if it wasn't for him. Now, we have two guests today. We're going to talk to uh, Mr. Tito from the Volunteers, and then we're going to turn the mic over to none other than my pastor, Pastor Darius Jeffries. But right now, right now, let's um, go back to music for a moment, and I'll be right back. So happy to have one of the volunteers, the legendary volunteers from, uh, well, one of them is from Cleveland, Ohio. I've been knowing this young man quite some time, and the volunteers. In fact, they used to sing in West Virginia for my father. They've been on my father's broadcast in West Virginia. They have been, amen. Uh, we want to just speak to Tito, and you know, Tito's going to spend next week with us also, so we want him to, right now, we want him to tell you about a service that's coming up in September that I know you want to hear about, September 15th. Hello, Cleveland. Yes, the violinist, Robert Blair's original violinist yes, will be the here. the original. September 15th. Over at Sanctuary Baptist Church. I think that address is 4004 East 131st Street. That's right, Sanctuary. Cleveland, Ohio. We're looking for y'all faces in the place. Y'all come on out and support this birthday program for Tito and Escalade Sure. Amen. And, and we got some Cleveland groups on here also. Is this your birthday? Yeah, my birthday is 16th. The 16th? So okay, then I'll come out and say, so you're going to have a cake there? Yeah, we're going to have a cake there. Okay, all yeah, right. Yeah, we're going to have a cake there. You better have a cake there. And I know you kind of not really in a hurry, but we want to make sure you come back next week and give I'll us more information. I'll be back next week to give you some more information. And that's the 13th. The 13th, I'll be back. Okay. All right. And I'm so happy you stopped by to check up on I us. I know I'm late, so before y'all would give me a chance to run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I no, we're not going to put you I, on the spot. I, I, I can't run fast, but 
Give me a hiss. <laughs> <laughs> we won't put you on the spot. You only missed coming three times. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. And I'm sorry for but that. But you're here today, and we're happy. In the rain. In the rain. That's yes. right. God bless you, God and thank you, you so. And, and God we're bless talking this about. Station. And uh, look here. I'll be back next week. That's right. So That's right. With your more information about Cleveland and gospel singing. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much, T.O., for coming. Out. And your son, right. he's here. Oh, that's my manager over there. That's your manager? Yeah, that's my manager. Your manager? I have three managers. I, I hear that. Well, if, since you got three, I was wondering the other three will be here next week. <laughs> okay, we'll talk to you then. All right. God bless you, and thank God you for you. coming. Love you all. Love you, too, and thank all you right. for stopping through, T.O. All right. God bless. Okay, and thank you so much for bringing your father down. He's trying to act like my senior, but actually I'm older than he is. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go back to music, Minister Larry James. I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. Again, Minister James, we thank uh, God for Tito, one of the original, one of the original volunteer singers with none other than Brother Robert Blair, the late Brother Robert Blair, and he's been doing some traveling so forth. He'll talk to us again on next week, and we'll have more time, and we'll talk to him about his vengeance. He's, they've been all out, I can't say the United States, outside of the United States. But right now, we're going back to Healing the Hurt. And so happy that you tuned in today. God bless you. I'm thanking God just for being able to be here today. But I serve that kind of God. He knows me and he knows my name. And we have none other than one of Cleveland's finest pastors here. And he happened to be my pastor. None other than Minister Darius J. Jeffries. And what I'm going to do... He's going to talk today about Millennium Pastors Pastoring a Traditional Church. Let's go with our devotional service, and then we will be right back and talk to our pastor.
We're so happy you tuned in today. The time happens to be 15 minutes after the 5 o'clock hour, and we are so happy that you tuned in. We're going to enter our devotion, of which is always in order. I thank God again for each and every one of you that prayed, sent cards, or whatever you did, or even you just thought about Reverend Abrams. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Right now, our scripture for today and it comes from Luke 4th chapter, 40th verse. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with the diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. The word of the Lord has already been blessed. Amen. Amen. Let's have our prayer minister Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Again, we're so happy you tuned in today. God bless each and every one of you. Call someone, share, tell them to text us. We do have Kenya here today, Sister Kenya. She's here today. And, of course, our pastor, my pastor, your pastor, none other than Minister Darius J. Jeffries. Not at my best, not strong, but God got me, okay? And I know a lot of you been concerned. Look at me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm still here. Amen. I'm, I'm talking real fast because I'm trying to get to the lesson today because I want to hear it myself. And we're going to tell Pastor just have his way today because Reverend Abrams, I'm going to have, this time I'm going to have to not talk so much, okay? You're going to have to do the talking, okay? <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for coming. Bless you. Good to be here with you today as always. And uh, we thank God for his healing power and uh, sustaining power. Uh, And I know you've had lots of expressions of love uh, the last few weeks. Especially Uh, your visit to the hospital. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we make sure that we uh, make sure we were there. Certainly you have given your life to ministry and we wanted to make sure we were there uh, for you and uh, uh, to cover you in believing prayer as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Again, we're just happy that you stopped by to check up on us, not at, only at the hospital, but here this evening also. And you said there, this lesson will be a continuation from the last one? Yes. Um, you told me we had so many uh, views Respond. and, com- and I responses. I that. Thank uh, you. So I decided that maybe we needed to continue this conversation uh, with a little bit more in-depth because uh, we were kind of running with all with all the songs so we (laughs) that's our little joke that's our little joke Mm -hmm. yes so but we're happy to be here honored to be here as always never take it for granted you inviting us uh to be here and certainly we continue to pray uh for god to continue to touch and to heal you because uh, this Sunday, we celebrate you. Yeah, this oh, Sunday. Yes yes, 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 yes. Out at the Mediterranean at yeah. 4 o'clock. Um, and yeah. guess who my guest speaker is going to be? Someone takes me and let me know who our guest speaker is going to be. This coming Sunday, 4 o'clock, 25021 Rockside Road, the Meridian Event Center. And we will be there celebrating our 65th radio and TV and Internet. Um uh, services and I do have services. I don't have shows or programs. Amen. And we want you to know that you are now tuned to KAZ Radio, Cleveland's online inspiration station, and one of the finest young pastors that I happen to know, none other than Minister Darius J. Jeffries. And you're going to tell us about this 
Yes, ma'am. So um, as we continue this conversation as it relates to uh, millennial pastors, pastoring traditional churches, I think one of the areas that we need to really look at is um, why traditional churches need to seek millennial pastors. Um, mm. And the reason why they need to seek millennial pastors um, is if you notice uh, throughout the country, whether black or white, the trend of growing churches, I won't use the word mega, mm. uh, because Ralph Douglas West, uh, Church Without Walls, says that we're not mega until what we what attendance is on Sunday shows up for Bible study. Uh, so nobody's nobody's mega until the same audience that comes on Sunday morning shows up at Bible study. He said that's when you're mega. Uh, but if you want to be a thriving and growing church, uh, or the thriving and growing churches in our countries, whether black or white, uh, those churches have pastors uh, who are leading congregations. Uh, that are under uh, the age of uh, 50. Mm -hmm. So it is important um, like for me. the next, like you, yes, ma'am, like mm -hmm. you, yeah, under the age of 50. Mm -hmm. It is important for the next generation to come, I believe, that they have someone that looks some, something like them. And, um, you know, many churches become stagnated um, because statistics shows that older pastors are staying longer uh, in their pastorate uh, because there are not a lot of millennial uh, pastors coming aboard. So those tenures are going into uh, their 70s, 80s, uh, and even, even 90s mm. uh, because um, there is not... Uh, there is not the outreach or outpouring of uh, millennial pastors. But I believe for a church to thrive, a church needs a younger pastor, not necessarily what? that may have all the experience, uh, but in order for the church to grow, it needs to have somebody youthful uh, so that the church prayerfully um, can begin uh, and it's all growing. done prayerfully, of course. Absolutely. It's all done prayerfully. All done prayerfully. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I want to thank some people for tuning in at this time, and then we're going to turn the mic back over to you because we want to know, and I want to know, why is there a strain in the relationships between younger pastors and older pastors? But right now, what I want to do is just just make mention that my daughter Renee, God bless you, baby. Hey, thank you Renee, so bless much you, bless for, you. Thank you so much, you and Kenya. Thank you so much for your attention. Kenya gave me so much attention, y'all. Bless uh, you. Uh, Sister Johnny Jefferson, God bless you, and thank you for tuning in, Dale Reader, Renee, Renee. Um, Tara, God bless you, each and every one of you. And we're trying to get back to our pastor because I don't want to give him time to do and take the time back talking, okay? But I want you to know that each and every one of you that tune in today are really, really appreciated. Thank you. Okay, now, we're back to our pastor and our millennium pastors pastoring a traditional church. Yeah, I think the strain between the younger pastor and um, a seasoned pastor is is nothing new. Um, it's become more magnetized now. Um, I feel as though, and I'm comfortable enough with saying this, uh, that the older pastor feels threatened by the younger pastor because the older pastor has more years behind them than in front of them. And uh, they feel like, you know, the, the wall is closing. Uh, instead of embracing them and uh, giving them some of the tools and tips um, to help them in ministry, um, it seems like they are threatened. And at the same time, younger preachers, don't feel like they have a voice 
uh, with older pastors. Um, yeah, they don't feel like they have a voice. Like their voice doesn't count. And so there's this disparity, uh, even if you notice uh, for those for those that, um, you know, for those that preach um, for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually older pastors preaching for older pastors and younger pastors preaching, uh, preaching for younger yeah. pastors. So um, it's, it's, it's a strain when it doesn't need to be because uh, Joshua needed Moses and Mos Moses needed Joshua as well as Paul needed Timothy, and certainly Timothy needed Paul. And they both go um, together. But it's, uh, it's very disheartening to see that we preach the same gospel, uh, we believe the same thing, but we're not able to come together um, to, in cohesiveness to build the body of Christ. Uh, because, again, one group, which are older preachers, feel threatened, and I would even go to say younger preachers uh, feel like not only do they not have a voice, but they don't feel like they're respected as well. But um, I noticed you said they don't feel respected. Mm -hmm. Prior to with this one, now we're going to kind of reflect back. You said that the younger pastor is so important that they honor their predecessor. Yes. Yes, ma'am. No, I believe that a lot of young pastors that go into traditional churches, one of the failures is uh, they are trying to build their own legacy, but they are threatened by what they hear when they hear the voice of their predecessor. Whether their predecessor is alive or, or has folded up their tent and moved upstairs. Like, for instance... Uh, so those who may not be familiar with our church, uh, I've been there now almost seven months. Mm. Uh, it's been best seven months of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, But I followed a pastor who stayed 53 years. And I do recognize that while I am building my own legacy, that I should not be threatened by the voice of my predecessor. Because the reality is, no matter how good I preach, no matter how good I administrate, uh, no matter how many funerals I do, no matter how many conferences I host or whatever, uh, there will be some people that I will never be their pastor. And I'm comfortable in that uh, all the way. I'm comfortable in that. I will never be their pastor because all they know is Pastor Moses, which is our our beloved uh, Pastor Gant. Um and so there, but then there will be a group of people who will come in or who since being there, who immediately accept me as pastor. And then those that join the church, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I immediately come their pastor. But I think a lot of times younger pastors, while they're trying to build their legacy, they are intimidated by hearing people talk about the good old days under the former pastor. That doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I would encourage a younger pastor um, to sit down with key people in your church to find out your predecessor's style, leadership, uh, different qualities, that, 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 that may also help you in your pastorate as well as it relates what to do and what not to do, or even just to know um, how the church functions the way it functions because of that. One of the first things I do, you know, technology allows you to do that, is I went and heard some of Pastor Gant's messages to understand what was the church used to, what kind of style they were used to. And so I want to encourage some young pastor that while you are building your legacy, uh, don't be threatened by hearing your predecessor's voice. Honor your predecessor, whether right. dead or alive, um, because you would want somebody to honor and esteem you. And remember, regardless of what you may not like, may not agree with, obviously something went right before you got there for that person to stay yeah, yeah. and have that kind of tenure. So you should always honor that. But can I say this too? Yeah. Not only honor the, pre the predecessor, but honor the predecessor's family 
as well. That's right. Allow that legacy uh, to live on. And mm -hmm. so I want to give a shout out uh, to Pastor Gant's children today, mm -hmm. as well as his uh, lovely bride, uh, First Lady Gant. And we take time to honor her every Sunday. When we mention our officers, uh, we, mention, uh, we mention her. Hey, Pastor, you know, you're so knowledgeable, and we I look like our time is just flying. Oh, like yeah, you, we, it's always, it always goes fast here. The time. <laughs> Pastor Jeffries, the time is flying by also. <laughs> <laughs> but while we are on mentioning it, I just want to uh, uh, send out my sincere condolences to the family of Reverend David Watts, mm -hmm. his young, his children, his uh, Reverend Marvin Watts, Jr., Marvin, Reverend Marvin Watts, he's not a junior. Reverend Mark Watts, Marshall, and Nita, know that I love you, I love you, I love you, and most all important is God loves you, and he has you. Amen. He has you in his arms, and we want to, uh, I wish someone would just post on the Texas, on the text messages, just post the, the arrangements, because I know as we talk now, there's a musical going on in his honor at his church. And of course, that's at 8324 Cedar Avenue. There's a musical in his honor being held just as we speak. Then the funeral, he will be funeralized tomorrow morning. So if you could just post it, Renee or someone would just post that for me on the Texas, and then we could move on with our pastor because I really want everyone to know and how much uh, Reverend David Watts was known pastor as everybody's pastor mm. from way back in the, I believe I own, went on in like 72 or 73, wow. 1972, 72. Wow. Ever since then, he and a gentleman named the late Reverend Melvin Kennebrew and myself, and there was a couple of others, actually started our heavy Christian journey during that time together. So he, everybody know he holds a special place in my heart, and he would tell you, Reverend Kennebrew would tell you, Reverend Emil Anderson would tell you. But uh, meanwhile, God bless the family. Don't want to dwell on it too much, but those services tonight, tonight, 8324 Cedar Avenue, Greater New Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. The uh, service musical for Reverend David Watts. In, in honor of Reverend David Watts and to his youngsters, his children, chil children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren, know that Reverend Avers love each and every one of you. And then tomorrow morning, the funeral, you'll be getting that information, and it is posted all over the media. It's posted every place. But however, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. I, I'm go in fact, I'm going as soon as I leave here. I'm going to stop by and check on the family. But meanwhile, uh, let's play a song, and then we're going to give the mic back to Pastor Jeffries because he has so much information that he has to share, and he's talking about one day, and I'm trying to get him to do two, maybe every other week. <laughs> he could just come in for about 15 minutes, right? I'm, I'm going to stick to my one time a month. I'm going <laughs> to stick to my one okay, time. Okay, let's go back to me. Let's listen to some music, and we'll be right back. Right yeah. there, yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus, baby. Hey! 
yes, yes, yes. I'm nothing but a child of God. My, and that my, makes my. me everything. Amen. Amen. We're going to move on down on our list today of concerns and questions and and some just statements. I'm making a lot of statements, right? Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Number three is what? has your biggest downfall as a millennium preacher pastor oh i'm on the wrong paper there we go okay. there you go you got all my stuff thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> what are some of the challenges millennium pastors have pastoring traditional churches i think this is interesting yes ma'am there are a lot of challenges um for a millennial pastor going into a traditional church uh, one of the challenges is how do you move the church to the next level? Mm. Yeah. Um, that's one of the challenges, moving the church to the next level. Well, you can't move the church to any level until you first of all know the people and even where they have a desire to go. Many people say they want change, until change shows up and so you just kind of have to take it in steps Mm -hmm. one of the things that i think we've been successful at second mount carmel in our short time is i've been able to identify what the church has done well in the past uh, or what has been some of the church's emphasis uh, such as christian education is really big um, focusing on youth uh, is really big. Um, um, anything family oriented, because the church is a family oriented church. So you use those things to build upon. So what we did, um, and we reestablished our Christian education team, right. and you know, as a consequence, we have joined state convention. We'll later on this year join a local convention. Um, that all helps with the strengthening of our Christian education department. Uh, this year we brought back, after some years, Vacation Bible School as well. Okay. Um, it was very highly attended. Mm-hmm. So, you know, moving to the next level is just not jumping from A to Z <laughs> and going higher. You just really have to focus on what the church does well and really allow God to move uh, upon your heart what and how to move. Um, I would also say one of the challenges, and I know for millennials this probably speaks very, very clear, is being relevant without losing sacredness. Being relevant without losing sacredness. Um, I think what we're experiencing in many of our churches is some churches are trying to be too relevant and there's no spirit. Um, there's, there's, there's no anointing, there's no gifting. And so we being relevant, the first thing that we wrestle with is what to wear. And because we're wrestling with that more than anything, we forget about the sacredness because even uh, you know, when 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 God looks for a king, he says it's not about the exterior as much as it's about the condition of the heart. So, but we have churches now that have a dress code uh, to meet people where they are, and that's fine. But I don't see a lot of sacredness. You know, people wearing flip-flops to church and ripped jeans to church. And I'm not saying that You can't praise, worship God, be spiritual in that. But a lot of times we're we're losing the sacredness of why we come, of why we enter. And so I want to caution younger pastors coming in, trying to be so relevant that you lose the sacredness of the cross of Jesus, of your message, because you can be so relevant Um, that now you water down the cross. There's hardly anything mentioned about Jesus in your sermons. Um, You know, everything is self-absorbed. How am I going to get better? How can I work with this group? How can I become successful? And our message should always be Christ-centered. 
And I'm concerned because it's not about what we have on, but I'm concerned about the content of what I'm hearing from a lot of our pulpits and even, you know, outreach and discipleship that have nothing to do with Jesus Christ at all mm -hmm. because we want to be relevant, but there is no sacredness uh, to go along with our relevancy. Uh, and, and then the other thing that I said earlier uh, that I think millennials struggle with uh, in their pastorate is tearing down or dismissing your predecessor's legacy. Tearing down or dismissing your, predece your predecessor's legacy. Um, it is vital um, to reverence, if I can use that word, who has come before you. It can really help you. It can kill some enemies even um, that, you, that you don't even know you have in your church. Mm. Um, because some people are trying to see how are you going to honor. Um, and you should always want to honor because that's biblical. That's a mandate. Um, and I just feel, I feel it's important. Um, you know, we are very intentional about honoring Pastor Gant, uh, you know, throughout the year. Uh, in our services and just mentioning his name and uh, next year look to do some other things um, that we'll talk about later on. Um, but you don't lose yourself in um, upholding or lifting someone else who has served before May you. May I just inject yes, right here, Pastor? I noticed that you do that even with the de deacons. You honor the older deacons even Digging though they it, may yeah. not even be in service at yeah. that particular time. Yeah. And I think that is so important. Yeah, I try to on a Sunday morning, and I, I know what you're talking about on a Sunday morning, uh, prior to the preach moment, I try to take those three to five minutes uh, to mention deacons, deaconesses, church mothers, choir. I do, that, I do that intentionally yes. because people, and that's what millennial pastors have to understand, even going to traditional church or any type of church, is these people don't have to do what they do. Um, they're not getting paid. They're not staff. They're not salary. Uh, they love God. Right. They love their church. That's the, that's and you should the, always take time to yes. honor them. One of the things that I want to say, too, uh, uh, the challenge that I feel young, young millennial pastors have is not spending enough time with your congregation outside of Sunday morning. Um, you don't talk with them. You don't do uh, follow up with visiting hospital. We just had a deacon uh, who was 96 years old who folded up his tent and moved upstairs. And uh, two weeks before he passed away, um, I took a deacon with me, and we went and gave him response. We gave, went and gave him communion. Now, somebody might consider that old, that old school, whatever. Uh, but sometimes taking those extra moments means the most to people. Uh, I'm even sharing with, we have some deacons in training, as you know, even about going to the hospital, nursing home. Sometimes yes. it's not finding the right words to say. Mm -hmm. It really is the gift of presence, That's just right. That's showing right. up. And you don't have to stay long uh, to be strong. You can stay five to seven minutes. Uh, but I think that's an issue with younger pastors. You know, they get called uh, to pastor. Now they feel like they've arrived and they don't have to, they don't have to do those things. Uh, but Jesus says in, in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, he says, I didn't come to serve, but to be, or I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. And uh, as, as that's why a part of my name or title is servant leader, because I always want to be caught uh, serving and intentional about serving um, in a lot of areas that, a lot of young pastors or even a lot of seasoned pastors uh, stay away from, but mm -hmm. it's vital. You never know who you're going to win. You never know who you're going to reach. Um, for instance, we did a funeral early on when I got here for one of our members, friends, unbeknownst to me, there was a young lady who um, came up. I thought she was going to ask for money or for prayer because we was at the funeral home and she ended up asking me to do her mother's funeral. Mm. And as a response to that, she started coming to the church. And as another response to that, she joined. And on the third Sunday, um, she's getting rebaptized. You got to take advantage of those moments. You got to be visible as a pastor. And a lot of pastors feel like once they're called to their place, that's all they want to do is sit behind their desk and never be visible. You have to be visible. Um, mm. 
you know, now school back is back in order. I want to make sure I'm intentional about going to volleyball games and and basketball games and track and all those wonderful things um, so that people understand that the pastor is just not the pastor in the pulpit, but he's also a supportive pastor um, in everyday life situations. You know, I'm sure that our listeners and watchers are really enjoying this because I am myself and I'm sitting here listening and thinking of the things that I have witnessed since you have come. Not saying that Pastor did not, because I, I remember some things that he used to do out of the norm that other pastors didn't do. But um, at this time, we have to get some music in here right now. And then what I'm going to do is come right back to you. But I want to just... Um, Welcome again to each and every one of you. I'm not calling too many names today because he has some vital information that we really need to hear. And myself as a pastor, is help, as a preacher, a minister, is helping me myself. And I want to remind you, you're now tuned to KAZ Radio, Cleveland's online inspiration station. And of course, we must give honor to none other than those in need. And, and uh, we want uh, uh, minister Larry James to know that. We really appreciate you. We really appreciate you. Amen. Amen. And we we Good to have him at the helm. Good to have him at the helm. Yes, because he understands both sides. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And we thank God for him. And to each and every one of you out there that are tuned in, listening, and watching, we thank God for you today. Right now, we're going to music. If you just keep faith through the night. As, as I was, I was weary wound, and so sad till I found in him a sweet resting place. And he had made, he had made me glad. Yeah. I had my share of trouble and the darkest darkest hour was just before day so many nights I had to lay down face tomorrow believing that the Found out you make a way. You make a way. If you're having problems on your you job, make a way. If you're having troubles in your you life, make a way. Whatever it is, you make a way. The Lord can make a way.
yes, yes. Mm. All right. All Believe right. it. He will make everything yes, he all will. right. Yes, he will. Lord, our Father, our Heavenly Father will make everything all right. Put your trust in him today. We're going to move right along at this time. I have so many thoughts going through my mind right now. I have to share real fast that when you go through things and you come from under them, like you, I mean, I'm grateful anyway, but right now to be sitting here. Yes, ma'am. And when I was at church that Sunday, I could not breathe. Mm. And I know the feeling of not being able to breathe. My Lord. But we're going to move along right now because look at me now. I'm talking too much. Oh, you're fine. I'm glad that you're able to be here. You look so beautiful. Let me take the opportunity also to thank you so much. You don't know what it means to look up and your pastor is standing, coming through the door. Bless you. Bless you. Okay. Now, I'm supposed to go to number what? Oh, uh, let's let's say good evening to uh, Sister Carleen Morgan. And she's going to be at that anniversary tomorrow to hear you speak uh, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday at 4. Sunday at to 4. To hear you speak. She's going to be there. Bless you. And so many others. Sister Paige, God bless you. And, of course, she's going to be there. So many others have contacted us. You know, I must I must love you. Because, <laughs> you know, Sunday at 4 o'clock is the Browns are playing. Oh. Uh, and Tom Brady, my favorite football player, is but hosting his. So, but you know, I, I must see, love you. you but know I, I must, didn't see the Browns sitting in the poor pits. No, they, no, they were okay. not. <laughs> I didn't see the Browns in the congregation, but I saw Reverend April stand. <laughs> ah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm just, I just wanted to put that in for free. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you gave them a free announcement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I caught it. <laughs> When pastoring a traditional church, what must a millennial pastor do to maintain futuristic as opposed to reverting back to the norm? Again, you know, one of the things that people will say is they want the church to move forward. They want change. And um, when you start to change things, you will meet some resistance. Um but I, I want to say three things about this. Um, believe in your vision that the Lord has given you. Um, and when God says it, cast uh, that vision. Yeah, believe in your vision and cast that vision. Um, what I've discovered is sometimes... The vision, the vision does not change, but there are there are moments when God will change your location to fulfill that vision. Uh, but if you be faithful and believe in your vision, uh, my good friend and mentor, uh, Dr. Evans says at one point, who pastors in St. Petersburg Friendship Baptist Church, says there will come a place in ministry for a pastor where you will find your people. Um, and that doesn't mean that everything is going to be easy, but it becomes easy to believe your vision and cast your vision because a lot of people will begin to, uh, to see it. So don't be ashamed, rather, your vision, because your vision is supposed to be bigger than you or bigger than what you can see or even bigger than what you can accomplish. Uh, but I would say don't be ashamed to cash that vision. Um, secondly, I would say uh, build you a team. Uh, Bishop Robinson, uh, who will be with us in a few weeks uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm going to be with him in a few weeks, uh, has encouraged me um, for the last few weeks and told me, Jeffries, build you an army. And so every pastor, you need to build you a team. Uh, not not a not a people that's going to be a yes people, but a people who can help you navigate the terrains of the church that you're at, particularly when you've only been there uh, within the first five years. There's a lot of things. Uh, they respect you as pastor. They listen to you. But if you listen to some of those conversations, you can learn a lot, and it can help you in your pastorate. Uh, but I would say build a great team. One of the things that we have launched already um, is a vision team. Um, persons, in fact, tomorrow I'll meet with these persons who make up 
different parts of our church, young, old, male, female. Um, some hold positions, some don't. Um, just to go over some nuances as it relates to some of the things that we want to do, it helps me uh, to be able to make a decisive decision. Um, they understand I'm the pastor, I'm going to do whatever the Lord leads me to do, but it's also the good to have voices um, that you can talk to that understand the pulse of the church. Because I will say this, as a young pastor going into a traditional church, you don't know anything about the church. You, 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 they're, they're calling you pastor, but you're really the itinerant preacher every Sunday um, because you have yet to get into the hearts and the minds of the people. And so meeting and having a group of people that can give you constructive criticism, um, tell you maybe this is not the right time to do this right now. It's a good idea, but not right now. Um, take all that into consideration. Um, as, and so build you a team. Build you a team. Amen. Let's um, kind of hold that for a moment. Yes, and um, Reverend um, Minister, did you uh, locate that song? But however, I do want to remind you of my anniversary Sunday. And yes. I must give away two tickets. All right. I'm giving away two tickets. All right. Okay, for Sunday. So the person that called... The fourth caller, fourth caller, um, we get two tickets. What about the third? I like the number three better. <laughs> okay, the third yeah. caller. Okay. <laughs> That's my pass to third. Okay. <laughs> so what we're doing, we are giving away two tickets to the person that uh, calls on number three, and they will receive two tickets to my anniversary, my 65th Radio, TV, Internet anniversary this coming Sunday, 4 o'clock p.m. Wow. at the Mediterranean. And our guest speaker will be guess who? Who? Me? Oh, Ooh. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored. I'm, okay. I, I'm so, so honored. So now we are looking for the third caller. Third and, caller. And my phone is telling me it's not going to give it to me. So what am I have to do? The third caller, make sure you get in there. Third caller, you're getting two tickets. The reason I'm giving two tickets, I do not like people traveling by themselves. Yes. Especially you just set them out two by two. And so forth, too. Yes, yes. And my phone is not doing what this phone do. So I'm going to give her her phone back before I get comfortable with it. <laughs> We only have about five minutes to My go, Lord. Pastor. And uh, we have, uh, but I know you're coming back because we Next still, month. I'm coming yeah, back next you, month. But you always leave out one or two, so that way I know you'll come back. Yes, ma'am. We're going to answer one more, and then we're going to be holding these same papers, and you're going to have to finish the next Yes, ma'am. Okay. What advice? Go to number six. Yeah, that's a good one. Go to number six? Yeah. Okay, okay. What advice would you give to traditional churches in regards to millennial pastors? Yeah, I think one of the things that when a traditional church calls a millennial pastor, uh, don't hand, don't allow God to move on your hearts and to a select a pastor and say that God has sent him or her uh, to be the pastor and then turn around and not allow them to pastor, mm. to almost handcuff them, um, allow them, uh, as uh, J Joe Bush says, Walker Memorial, Walker Memorial Baptist Church um, in the Bronx, he says, allow them to have vision. Yeah. And so uh, give them time to develop and to grow because it's, it's many of you, it's only one pastor. Um, and a lot of times I think what happens is we call, but then we handcuff them. We only mm. want them to do uh, so much and, and, and this, that, and other. And I, I guess also, too, uh, I know we're running out of time, that's why millennial pastors just will kind of make up in their mind and, and say they would rather go in and start a church than to deal with some of that after being at a traditional church. 
because you call somebody, you say they're sent of God, and then now you want to stifle them. And so that's why you see so many, so many churches that have been birthed uh, out of. But since we're the perfect congregation at Second Mile Carm, I'm sure you don't have to worry about that. I don't think I have to worry about that because we've had long <laughs> tenures, so uh, we want to keep that. We want to keep that going. But I would encourage every church to allow your pastor to dream and to have vision. That's the that's the best thing. Uh, that's the best thing that you can do uh, for your uh, leader and uh, to lift them up in uh, prayer. Uh, that's the one thing that I love about our ministry. We've been intentional about. Uh, we pray on Sunday nights, our yes. midnight cry call, and then we pray Friday mornings. But even behind the scenes, many people don't know this, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at a select time, uh, our leaders are praying. Because I believe everything that's going to happen, uh, it happens in and through and by prayer. Uh, so I want to encourage the church and the pastor uh, to continue to do what God says. And you ask, what is the standard? The standard is not your bylaws. It's not your constitution. Uh, it's not somebody who's been a member of the church for 40, 50 years. But the standard is the word of God. And if that's the standard, uh, then we won't have uh, vacant churches as long as they're vacant. Uh, we'll fill them quicker uh, because we understand how can they hear without a preacher? And how can uh, they preach unless he's been sent? Whew, that's a good place to close Amen. right there. I felt Jesus yes. right in through there. But you want to know something? We are so happy to have you back. And we certainly did wish we somehow had more time and you could just uh, continue on. And we oh, could just yes. Well, thank you again time. for always having me once Coach once Jane. a month. Thank you for always having me. And I'm grateful and glad I'm to see everyone, you back. I'm, I'm going to let everyone hear me invite you to come. Sometimes just give me a call because you're giving information yes, that we really need. Yes, and I being a minister myself, I appreciate it. Yes, and I know they do because they're to each and every one of you out there that are listening or text and called in, thank God for you. To those of you that took time out your busy schedules to wish me well, God bless each and every one of you. You know, it's just a blessing to be here on KAZ Radio, Cleveland's online inspiration station. It's a blessing, uh, Pastor, just to be here. I oh, must say that yes, for me yes, to be yes. here. It could have went another way. So we are yes. totally grateful. And you're, and and you're looking... Uh, as yourself, charm, radiant, Thank and beautiful, you. all in three. Thank you. And uh, well, we are to uplift people. Amen. You know amen. amen. And we're excited about Sunday to come yes, and uh, celebrate you. Sixty-five years. Can I get is, a short excerpt? No, we don't yeah. have time. Really, we can get an excerpt, <laughs> but we don't really have time. But I thank God again for each and every one of you. Amen. In. And I was sitting here just looking real quick, real quick, an excerpt from one of my sermons, and it, I just happened to. See See, the Lord asked him a question that God is asking you today about your situation. Can this dry bone live? Mm. You are not alone. Remember that God is on your side, and he is not a God that will lie. He is in you, up, down, side to side. He is with you. Amen. To each and every one of you out there, know that you are loved. God loves you, and we love you here at KAZ Radio. Cleveland. Can I say this real quick? Sure. If you don't have a church home, I know it's football right. season. Come and join us, 5713 Kinsman. We have two services on Sunday. We have an 8 o'clock service, one-hour service, 8 o'clock to yes. 9 o'clock, and then we have our 11 o'clock worship experience. So if you're looking for a great time uh, and you want to hear more That's about right. uh, this, this is what we do on Sunday. This is, what we uh, do. This is just a little taste of what you get here and uh, thank you again uh, 5713 Kinsman Road we'll be glad to have you 8 a.m. one hour worship and then we have 11 o'clock worship even if as well church, even if you have a home visit. church yeah I'm the new boy in town come check us out <laughs> yes ma'am we're close on that note amen <laughs> you're not new anymore ah, I'm still new <laughs> old folks would say I'm still wet behind the ears <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>